Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Throne and Liberty. We're going to start by optimizing Windows. After that, we will see your NVIDIA parameter. And after that, we're going to optimize the game. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings. And we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're going to start by gaming over there. So the first one is Game Bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processors. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again, capture, capture, make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode, honestly, is really, really good. Back then with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power uh back then uh, we were recommending to use the best performance but now honestly just use balance you will have better boost clock longer boost clock uh, i did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance and honestly i'm getting better result with balance so super important to do that Another thing I want to mention is some recommendations. So make sure that your uh, XMP profile is activated if you have it on your BIOS, super important. Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your CPU if you have an AMD or Intel. Also make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest update from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now let's go to the NVIDIA app. The first thing that I want to recommend, uh, I'm not a huge fan, honestly, of the um overlay so nvidia overlay i really recommend to deactivate this one sometimes it's causing issue like stuttering you're losing some fps with it so i really recommend to deactivate it also we're gonna go to the control panel i'm gonna show you some optimization that you can do so we're gonna go to the manage 3d setting first so the first thing that you should definitely activate it is your low latency mode make sure this one is at on Another thing that I recommend is your power management mode. This one, pretty much the same thing than the, the, the one from Windows. Make sure that you're using normal. Don't use the maximum performance. I'm getting also better boost clock, more FPS with it. And the last one is your shader cache size. By default, your cache will be a driver default like this. And normally it's 4 gig. Uh, I recommend to start with 10 if you don't have a lot of space on, on your computer. And if you have a lot of space, go with 100 gig. Honestly, it's a game changer for your cache size. Uh, you're going to struggle less with stuttering and also that your game need to recompile and stuff like that. If you install a lot of game, uh, this one can be very good for you. Now let's go to change resolution. The last one, really important to make sure that first of all, that you're selecting the uh, monitor, uh, that uh, first of all, you're using the native resolution of your monitor and also super important to have a proper refresh rate over there. Uh, by default, sometimes when you just change your monitor, it will be at 60 Hertz. Uh, so depending on the type of monitor that you buy, 144, 240, make sure that you're selecting this one. This option also, you can change it on Windows or your Radian driver if you have a Radian car. So no problem with that. The last one is your G-Sync. If you want to activate your G-Sync, really important to select the monitor. It needs to be compatible and you will enable over there. Uh, I'm not using G-Sync me. I always unlock my FPS because I want the lowest input lag. But if you don't like those steering line, definitely activate your G-Sync over there. So now let's go back to the game. So now inside of the game. So first of all, we're going to go to graphic and screen. Make sure that you're playing full screen to have the lowest input lag possible and more FPS. Resolution, make sure that you're playing native. Don't downgrade your resolution over there. The game will look too blurry. 
frame rate limit i just play no limit so unlimited uh to have the lowest input lag if you have thermal issue sometimes it's better to just lock your fps with the amount of hertz of your monitor so for an example you're playing on a 60 hertz uh, laptop just lock your fps at 60. I don't use VSync uh, to have the lowest input like possible, but uh, if you're using frame generation, uh, it will be anyway grayed out. Resolution scale, don't touch it. You should use upscaling technique if you want more FPS. So after that, NVIDIA DLSS, if you have an RTX card, for sure go with this one, quality. You're gonna get 12% boost in your FPS. I don't recommend balanced performance or ultra performance. The game looks too blurry. If you have an RTX card, 4000 series or more recent, Frame generation is huge. It's like 35% boost in your FPS. So this one is amazing. And also uh, make sure that you're using the low latency. If you're not using the, for example, the frame gen, just select this one. Uh, the FSR2, you don't have FSR3, no frame generation. That's a bit sad for AMD guys. Uh, so go with quality. You're going to get 10% boost. Again, don't use lower than that. Uh, you have the sharpening over there uh, that you can use. Uh, start at 0.7. Um, if you if it looks too much like uh, an Instagram filter, it's probably because you're too high, so go lower. If the game looks blurry, just go higher. So I'm going to go back to my quality with frame gen. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Now let's go to quality. A lot of different parameters in this game. Uh, so I'm going to tell you which one have the most impact and also which one you should keep because the image quality will decrease too much. So let's look at this. First of all, anti-aliasing go with low. If you're using the LSS, it's, it will not work anyway. But uh, the game looks very blurry when you're using it. So this one definitely low. Ambient inclusion, screen space reflection, I recommend medium. You can get a nice 6% boost in your FPS. And honestly, the ambient inclusion at low, the game looks very flat. View distance, this one you should definitely uh, oh, sorry, use medium over there. Uh, at I or Epic, it will tank your FPS like crazy. And I'm not a big fan of using low in this game. Too much pop out and stuff like that. You don't see very further in front of you. So this one definitely go with medium. Character count, I recommend to uh, use medium. After that, post-processing, this one, I recommend medium. At low, the games, you will have better visibility. So it's a question of preference because... If you compare Epic to low, you can expect a nice 8% boost, but the game looks very flat without it. So my recommendation is maybe go with medium if you want pure quality. If you just want performance, go with low. Character quality, this one you can use I. Um, I see that some parameter just reset. That's a bit weird. Uh, shading quality, this one I recommend medium. Uh, you're going to get a nice 4% boost. And those one are the, the, the parameter that will provide you your, the most of your FPS. Shadow quality and distant shadow quality at low. Those two can provide you 25% boost. So super important to put this one at low. Texture quality and its tropic yeah, filtering really depend on the amount of VRAM on your GPU. If you have 6 gig and more of VRAM, honestly, you can run Epic. Uh, 4 gig I, 3 gig, 4X and medium and less than 4 gig go like this. So let's go back like this. Effect quality, I recommend to go with low. Honestly, you're going to tank your FPS like crazy when you're fighting if you're going in with Epic. So this one will stabilize your FPS a lot. And the vegetation quality, I recommend to go with medium. After that, those four over there, just uncheck everything. A lot better visibility and also a little bit better FPS. Level of detail, I recommend to go with medium. Character shadow quality, go with low. Another 5% boost over there. Lighting quality, medium. Terrain quality, high. Volumetric cloud and volumetric fog. This one is pretty huge if you compare it also with uh, the shadows. Uh, you can expect at low versus ultra a nice 18% boost. So definitely go with low. Shader preloading, go with I. I recommend to check the optimized large scale combat and also use DirectX 12. I did a couple of tests without it. And honestly, uh, in each case on my 2070, even my RX 580, uh, uh, it's better to play DirectX 12. The FPS is more stable and also I'm getting more FPS. So you can definitely test it if you want. But honestly, it should be fine at Direct Elf, Direct X, sorry, 12. So that's about it, guys, for my Throne and Liberty guide. If you have any question, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.